I now look to Karine Kinezan Antulia to close the case for the opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, brothers, comrades, it's an honor for me to be with you and add my humble voice to the debate. My brother O'Malley uh, concluded in a way that I would absolutely agree with him. He said, um, we need to destroy imperialism, and in order to do that, let me finish the sentence, we need to go back to the drawing board. A few days ago, I was in South Africa, in Johannesburg, and, uh, and someone asked me, um, what I thought about the legitimacy of the uh, elections in the De Democratic Republic of Congo. And I immediately thought, and I, and I told myself, there was something wrong with the question. And what was wrong was that, why, in, why is that that, is, that is in this day and age we should, we should still talk about Africans fighting to have their votes respected? Um, the entire continent, and indeed the world, at some point were united in their condemnation of Nelson Mandela's incarceration because they knew that at, at the core of this incarceration there was a very simple demand. It was the demand of a democratic vote. And the end of apartheid should have meant that the tragedy of Africans who had lost their lives and their freedom for democratic elections should have been one less of a problem in the sea of problems that the continent faces. But unfortunately, it's not the case. Africans up until now are still um, disappearing. And they are maimed and they die because they're fighting to have their votes either accepted or counted. Um, but today we're talking about an ever closer union. And there's nothing new about it. Regional integration is something that, of a buzzword, I would say. Um, you walk into any policy setting and any academic setting, and obviously people would normally embrace it um, because it's seen as inherently good, regardless of the circumstances that shaped it or the, or, or the types of leaders that drive it and champion it. I take a different view, and I will ask uh, for your indulgence as I make my case. I see, I see a closer union as a function of two things, two elements. One is the functional integration we're talking about, um, the house, the machinery, the mechanics of it, and the other one is a shared community of values. And there's nothing new about the functionality of a, of a, of a union because I'm a daughter of Burundians, married to a Ugandan, uh, lived in five countries in, the, in, in East Africa, and Southern Africa, and I know that, like all of you and any student uh, of African affairs, that obviously Africa has invented the most ambitious and intri intriguing models of regional integration in the world. Um, the original East African community had, of Kenya and Uganda and Tanzania, for instance, had essentially achieved a monetary and economic integration decades before uh, the Maastricht Treaty, which established the European Union, for instance. Um, at its independence, East Africa had a customs union, um, common external tariffs, currency, and a postal service. We had one um, East African way, uh, airways, a common transport infrastructure, um, one Af East African development bank. We had universities, um, which were within a vision of one university of East Africa. East Africans of my generation st should still remember the famous brands of the mighty East African industries. Um, I remember names like Blue Band Margarine. Uh, some of you might remember those. Princess Patra Cream, Sanyo Radio, the cooking oil, the Ever Ready batteries, uh, some of which have stood the test of time. The jingles of their promotion were, were sounds that we will never forget. We will never forget. And, and I, would, I would encourage East Africans here to actually go, the younger ones, obviously, to go and, and Google, because it's good and important that all of us reminisce in terms of what it meant to be East Africans compared to what it means to be an East African today. Um, 
And, and this East African community evolved into a shared community of values because it was not about the things and it was not about the assets and it was not about the markets, but it was also about the sounds and the rhythms and the stories of Harare and the Harare and the tortoise, the, 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 the Mumbi, Anansi and Spider, those stories which were written by African writers. Um, it collapsed in 1977, not because there were fundamental issues, but because presidents had issues between them and not East African members. Um, I've spoken at length about the ESC experience because I think it captures the essence of our argument today. Um, because the current ESC has very sophisticated protocols. The African Union, as, has, as it has been said, since 1963 and 1983 and 2001 and 2015, and now we're talking about reforming the African Union, it has protocols, the machinery, it's there, but it's devoid of ethos. It is devoid of those values that brought a rhythm in our life. Um, and what do we mean by that? We mean that the integration of soft values, we're not talking about the hard integration, we're talking about where's the, where's the soft integration? It's, it's not there, it's absent. And that's what we mean when we talk about a, 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 an African Union that should not be supported, but it is because it is wrong, because it is a lie. Um, and the other thing I would like to add is that if you go back to the issue of the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo, let's remember that a few days ago there was an election and, and we had these mighty organs. We had the SADC, the South African Development Community, the African Union, the International Conference of the Great Lakes Region, which seemed to believe that the evidence brought before them was faulty. So they issued statements and they asked the votes to be recounted and, and, they, and they asked many things from the, uh, 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 from the, from the Democratic Republic of Congo's uh, government. But yet, less than 48 hours after these statements were, were issued, individual member states, including those who were part of the African Union broke ranks and distanced themselves from it, effectively undermining their own community and bringing the conflict resolution process in Congo to a halt. Um, what does that mean? It means that this is a type of union that way too many leaders on the continent would prefer. It is, a, it is, a, it is an African Union that leaders do not want to create because it sets a precedent against them. The message then delivered to Africans to our citizens is that, is that our leaders will not tolerate, do not want an African Union, so let's really vote against this motion because um, they don't want an African Union that truly represents the popular interest, hold governments to account and enforce decisions. It is then a union that serves presidents and prime ministers. It's a union built on things and not values. It's a union that hates accountability and tolerates wrongdoing. Lastly, it's a union that fears the people and keeps them out of their deliberations. That, ladies and gentlemen, and let's go back to history again, is not the union that Kwame Nkrumah, Mwali Munyerere, Amil Kal Cabral, Agostino Neto, Samora Marshall, Wangari Mathai, Adelaide Tambo, Patrice Lumumba, and the Prince Louis Guagasore died for. So let's go back to the drawing board and let's rather use the concept of exceptionalism at the domestic level. Let's break the union and let's leave countries to evolve from their own values. It is for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm asking you to vote in opposition for this motion. Thank you.